Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Quick Tech Tips and Reviews. My name is Tony and with this channel we bring you guys a variety of tech related content. If this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe and hit that little bell down below so that you're alerted to when new content is being released. In today's video we're going to take a look at how to update a Unify access point via SSH. All right guys, so today I'm gonna to show you how to update a Unify access points firmware via SSH. Now you might be asking yourself, why would we wanna do it via SSH? Well, there are a couple of reasons, and one that comes to mind that has happened to me quite a bit in the past is, I order devices on Amazon. I usually adopt them out to my digital ocean cloud-based controller. Depending on how old the firmware is, sometimes the devices just don't show up, even after informing the device of where the controller is by issuing the um, set and form command. So at my screen, we're looking at my Unify controller. It's a site that I'm getting ready to prepare for a client and I'm attempting to adopt a Unify UAP AC Lite. Now I've brought up the Ubiquity Discovery tool and you can see my, my UAP AC Lite has shown up here on my network with a status of pending. And if I go in here, I've already issued the inform URL, but I'll do it one more time. And typically when all goes well, the device will show up here in the controller. Now I've done this several times and the device has not shown up. So there you go. You see, I've given the inform command and no device. So what do you do at this point? Well, Sometimes I'll just take that device and put it on a local network with a local controller. So auto discovery will find the device. And in fact, I did a video on the difference between local versus layer three adoption. And I'll put the link to that video up above if you're interested. But I'll normally take that device if it doesn't show up when attempting to adopt it to a cloud-based controller, I'll attach it to a local controller and it usually shows up. However, the last two times I attempted to do that, again, depending on the age of the firmware, the device didn't even show up in the local controller. So then really, what do you do? You have no choice. The only option left is to go into the command line and update it via SSH. So that's what we're going to do today. All right, guys. So in order to complete this process, you're going to have to install two free utilities if you don't have them already. One is PuTTY so that you can establish an SSH connection into the device. And the other is a program called WinSCP, which is going to allow us to copy the local firmware file that we download from UBNT's website over to the access point. So to get started and to save time on this video, I already have those two programs uh, downloaded and installed on my computer. So right now my website's looking, my uh, browser's looking at the UBNT website. So let's go ahead and download the firmware file. So in this case, we're working with UAP AC Lite. So let's come on over to the Downloads tab. And once we get to the Downloads page, let's select Unify from the top menu. And then on the left side of the screen, find the device. So we're going to click on Unify AP AC Lite. And here's the firmware, the latest firmware. It's version 4.0.10. So we'll come over to the Download arrow and click that. We'll accept the terms and now we're going to download this bin file here to lo locally to the computer okay now that the file has been successfully downloaded we need to change the name of that file to fwupdate.bin so let's do that now so let's go into our downloads folder in my case it's the downloads folder you might have a different download location on your computer, but here is the file that we just load, downloaded from UBNT's website. So let's right click on that file and select rename. And we're just gonna change all that to FW update. And we're gonna leave the dot bin. Okay, so now we've changed the file name to what it needs to be in order to complete the update process. So we'll close this and now we're going to launch the program WinSCP so that we can copy that file from the local computer, from that downloads folder, over to the device. So let's launch WinSCP, which I have in my taskbar. 
And what the first thing you're going to do in the sessions tab, in the session area, you're going to come over to the file protocol and from the drop down menu, you're going to select SCP. And we need to put the host name in. Now that's the IP address of the access point. So earlier, um, I looked at the UBNT discovery tool. I found out that my address was 192.168.25.170. So that's what I'm going to put in here. Yours will differ based on your local network. The username and password are the defaults, UBNT, UBNT, because it's a brand new device. And then we're going to go ahead and say log in. Okay, once the connection is made to the device, what you're looking at on your screen now, on the left side is the local computer, on the right side is the file structure of the access point. So the first thing we're going to do is change um, the path here to the download path, to the, you know, the path where the file is downloaded. So for me, that's the downloads folder. Okay, and there you go. So now you see the left side of the wind SCP utility is now showing um, the downloads folder and there's the FW update. On the right side, we're looking at the access point. So we're going to come up to here to the drop down where it says persistent. We're going to select root and then we're going to come down and double click and select the temp folder. Okay, now once your screen looks like this, where you have your download file here and the access points temp folder here, simply take the file and drag it over into the temp folder. And you can see it's copying over the file. And just to confirm, there's the file now located in the access points temp folder. At this point, we can close the Win SCP uh, session. And we're going to say OK. OK, so now that we have the file downloaded, we changed the name and we copied it over from the local computer to the device. It's time now to initiate the upgrade. So we're going to do that using uh, SSH and we're going to use that program called PuTTY. So I already have PuTTY uh, running on my computer. So the host name again is the host name of the access point. So 192.168.25.170. And in your case, you know, this will be different. We're going to go ahead and say open. And we're going to uh, accept the alert to add the key. And the login, again, it's the uh, default UBNT. Okay, so now you can see we're logged into the access point and we're at the prompt and we're going to copy the file or we're going to paste the following command s wrapper dot sh space upgrade to space ampersand and I'll put the link I'll put that command down in the video description and this will initiate the upgrade process okay that's normal and now the access point is in the process of updating I'm going to grab a quick video of what the access point is doing Okay guys, so now that we've updated the firmware via SSH, we're back in the um, DigitalOcean cloud-based controller. And you can see here now, I have a new device under the um, devices tab with the IP address of 25.170. And you can see now that the status is pending adoption. The version of the firmware is up to 4.0.10, which is the one we downloaded from UPNT's website. So all I have to do now to complete the process and get this adopted to the controller is click the adopt button here. So let's go ahead and do that. Let me go back out to the discovery tool and let's just, okay, so it's not showing up in the discovery tool. Okay, it is provisioning now in the controller. And soon we should get a status of connected and then we could do our typical uh, give it a name, etc., and complete the configuration. But as you can see, copying the file from the local computer 
over to the device using WinSCP and then issuing the um, install command or upgrade command via SSH using PuTTY, you can see now we went from having a device whose firmware was so old that it was not showing up in the controller even after giving it a set and form command or showing up in a local controller via auto discovery. You can now see that once we've upgraded the firmware, here it is in the cloud-based controller. It's showing up and it is connected. So that is the purpose of this video. I'm not gonna go ahead now uh, to do anything further. We've achieved our goal. So guys, if you like the video and if you've run into this uh, problem before where the, the install a new device and you're going to go through your normal adoption procedures and it doesn't show up, uh, if you've encountered that, put your comments down in the video uh, description, not in the video description, in the comments below and let me know if you've experienced th this same thing. Again, I hope you liked the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Be sure to check out some of my other videos up above. Please remember to subscribe, like, and share. And use those Amazon affiliate links. It doesn't change your price, but it does help out the channel. My name is Tony with Quick Tech Solutions. As always, I thank you for watching. See you next time.